Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. My notes aren't here. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. So glad you're here. On behalf of Marilyn, the family, and myself, we're so glad you came out with us to celebrate the homegoing of Michael. What a glorious time, what a wonderful time. The memories are what we have. Mike was special. This is going to be hard. You didn't say it'd be this hard. Anyhow, Mike was a loving soul. He knew no, he knew no harm. He gave everybody love and he gave them all of himself, he really did. There was a time on 61st Street, going back many years, we were all at the, at the house, Pop and Grandma's, and we were going out, I believe. I think we went out to dinner, something like that. And Michael was looking a little scruffy. He had three, four-day-old beard going. <laughs> Marilyn came to me, she's like, would you shave Michael? Me? I can barely shave myself. <laughs> so first thought was electric razor. Ideal. Let me go find electric razor. There is no electric razor in that house. <laughs> then someone came to me and says, well, Papa's got straight edge razors. <laughs> oh, no. No way. Never even shaved myself with one of those. So then someone came up with a Bic two-bladed plastic, 500 for a penny. <laughs> And I said, all right, I'll try it. So anyhow, got him all lathered up. Michael was very cooperative, stood there. I said, can you make your, your lips stick out so I can get up underneath your lip and all? He did. Everything I asked, he did. And the amazing part was, didn't cut him once. Didn't nick him. Got through, and I'm going, oh, what a relief. <laughs> Came out, and of course, Marilyn's like, oh, he looks beautiful, great. Oh, good job. So anyhow, that was a bond. Didn't know, I had no clue this was a bond that was being built. But um, Michael at that point in time latched on to me. And it was a situation. From then on, he'd go to mom, Eddie Fountain shaved me. It wasn't just Eddie. No, it's gotta be Eddie Fountain shaved me. And everybody, I think in Savannah, pretty much knew Eddie Fountain shaved me. Cause he'd do like this, Eddie Fountain shaved me. Yeah, so that was great. Precious, precious memories. Well, it went on for quite a few years, and me and Michael had that same bond. It was great. Walk in the room, he just light up. I didn't deserve that. I didn't. But then Kathy came in my life. <laughs> you know, they say from the penthouse to the bottom floor. I'll do it that way. So anyhow, it isn't very far. Well, I found that bottom floor that day when Kathy and I, well, we came to Savannah and she met Michael. I love you, Kathy. Well, I do too. You know? So. <laughs> yeah. But it was nothing but Kathy from then on. I fell secondary. And that was okay. That was okay. It was all good. But uh, him and Kathy had a special relationship. She would sit down and she'd bring notebooks and bring him magazines and, and things to draw in, stuff like that. And uh, they would sit down and do all these different things and stuff like that. But Michael loved that. And then Kathy taught him how to make a heart with his hands. How to do this and take this and do this. Hmm. Tough. In the hospital, when he couldn't do this, because this arm didn't work, he did this. He still loved people. He showed them. I'll miss Michael. But I'm not sad in the way that maybe some people in this world suffer with, but I'm happy. I know where Michael is. He's with his daddy, he's with Papa, he's with Grandma. He's walking the streets of gold with Jesus. 
He's fine. And if you don't know that peace, you need to find that peace. And there's people here who can help you know that peace before you leave here. But we love you, Michael. Miss you. I don't know if I stepped out of the order of the service. I was just told I was behind Daddy. So if we have to sing two songs in a row, we can do that, okay? Michael. One second, I'll get there. It is a great honor. I will. It's got to clear up first. <laughs> It is a great honor to be asked to, to speak to y'all today. And so, I want to bring what I saw in Michael's life. And this is the best I could come up with. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Michael was definitely a meek soul. He never really owned anything never really had a life outside of what everybody else had going on. He never made plans to go anywhere. Michael never had to worry about paying a bill or cooking a meal or who was going to take care of him. Michael could wake up every morning and just go live his life. He didn't fix his own breakfast, lunch, or dinner. He could turn on every light in the house and not worry about an electric bill. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he never had to worry about a roof over his head. I'm not sure if Michael had a concept of ownership. He surely never understood debt or having to earn an income. He lived his life on the love and care of others. He was fed and cared for through the love of his family. He was sheltered and clothed and entertained solely by their hands and care. Michael never had a choice in his meekness. It was something that he was blessed with at an early age. He lived it well though. In fact, Michael was probably the only one of us who could have lived it as well as he did. He certainly lived it better than I ever could have. Michael was a meek soul. For they shall inherit the earth. Michael did inherit the earth. I never saw him walk into a place where he wasn't totally at ease, like he had been there many times before, or like he owned the place. <laughs> On many occasions, Michael did own the room he was in. <laughs> Within minutes of entering, he would be engaging strangers and making them laugh or smile. And Michael was an absolute genius at finding a pretty lady for a dance. <laughs> no, Michael never had a problem with looking like he was exactly where he was supposed to be. He looked like he could have owned every room without actually ever owning anything. Michael inherited the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I am sure that we will hear many times today how pure Michael's heart was. One of his favorite things to talk about was those who had gone on before him and what they might be doing in heaven. You see, he was very simple in the way he talked about it, but Michael was always looking ahead to that time when he would see them again. He never questioned his life ending in heaven. 
He just always knew it as fact. Only the purest of heart can see the end and never wonder how to get there, but just know they will get there. And yes, Michael has already seen God. Within seconds, Within seconds, Michael was face to face with his creator. He has already shared that big toothy smile with Jesus, and I'm sure Jesus has looked back at him with a hearty laugh and a warm hug and said, Welcome home. There are many here who have been waiting for you. Come on, Michael. Let's go have a reunion. <laughs> now Michael gets to sit with Don, Papa, Grandma, and Elvis, <laughs> and tell them in his simple way about what we're doing on earth. So where does that leave us? What do we learn from Michael's life? First of all, that leaves us very blessed to have been part of his life. Secondly, we can learn from others and how they cared for him. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Things happened to Michael at an early age that caused lifelong conditions. He never fully developed mentally, and he had numerous medical issues. From that time on, Michael was going to need constant care and attention. From that moment on, a mother, a father, and their children decide mercifully to never leave Michael out of the family life. I am sure over the years they have heard it suggested that he should be put in a home, which might have been the easier path, but that was not the path they chose. They decided to shoulder every burden and walk every mile it would take to have Michael right beside them for everything they did. Every night out or church dinner or family vacation, Michael went everywhere with the family. Michael has probably been to more places in, the, in this world than most of us here in this room. And he has walked in like he could have owned every one of them. I hope you understand how much selflessness, love, and mercy it demands to take on such a lifelong endeavor. Think about Jesus on the cross. It wasn't duty or commitment that allowed such an act. It was love and mercy. This family is full of love and mercy. Blessed are you, Marilyn. Donna, Debbie, Claire, and Scott, for you have been merciful, and you will be shown mercy. Blessed are you, friends and family, for you have been shown meekness, purity of heart, and mercy all through Michael's life. And blessed are you, Michael, for you will have no more pain. If I had only known the last time would be the last time I would have put off all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer Held on a little tighter Know what I'd give for one more day with you Cause there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed is healing mine The only scars in heaven it won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down is that the only scars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now? I 
I know the road you walked was anything but easy You picked up your share of scars along the way Oh, but now you're standing in the sun You fought your fights and your race is run The pain is all a million miles away There's no these scars in heaven They won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken and all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now For the hands that hold you now There's not a day goes by that I don't see you You live on in all the better parts of me Until I'm standing with you in the sun I'll fight this fight and this race I'll run Until I finally see what you can see Oh the only scars in heaven They won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down That the only scars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now. Why'd y'all put me after that tearjerker? <laughs> mm. You're gonna hear some uh, themes you've already heard from the previous two eulogies, and I just want y'all to know that's, that wasn't planned at all. Um, and I hope that's a, a testimony to the way Michael impacted us, and probably y'all too. Um, I know everyone here today knew Michael in different ways, as a son, uh, as a brother, as a family member, uh, friend. I met Michael 30-something years ago uh, when I was dating his big sister Donna. Uh, it took a little while before uh, Donna would introduce me to Michael because she was so protective of him. <laughs> but uh, finally got around to that, and uh, fast forward a few years, we got married. And as we started spending more time with her side of the family, uh, whenever we would spend time with them, um, I would introduce myself as Mike. I usually go by Michael outside of this, this group right here in case y'all didn't know that. But we did that uh, to reduce confusion, and uh, so that's, that was uh, something we always did. Um, and, you know, now I go by Mike every time I'm around y'all, as I just said. And so my point is that um, every time now, now that Michael's uh, passed on out of this life into a better one, uh, every time I, somebody in this room or outside this room calls me Mike, it's going to remind me of all the time spent with him and the family and the good times we had down here. So call me Mike as often as you like. That sounds weird to my kids and my wife, I know, because they don't call me that much, call me it that much outside of this group. But I know Michael influenced everyone in different ways, and that each of us will remember different things about him, some you've already heard. Um, but I'd like to share what Michael taught me, and more than likely what, what he taught you too. <laughs> First, Michael taught me hospitality. First Peter 4 9 says, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. The door to Michael's heart was always open to others, whether they were family or strangers, as you've already heard. Far from grumbling, he welcomed one and all into his life. Over the years, when we'd go to visit Donna's family, Michael would greet us excitedly. Um, 
Within five minutes of arriving, every time, he would say, you off? Meaning, am I going to be off work for the next three or four days? And uh, the reason he asked that excitedly is because he knew I was going to say yes, and he knew that meant he was going to get to spend time uh, with us, which he, he always liked visitors and spending time with visitors, so that brought joy to his heart. But then after I'd answer yes, he would always hold up his hand and say, two days, three days, four days? And he wanted to know how much time he was going to be getting. And if I didn't answer quick enough, his response would be, bubble and a half. And then he'd start laughing. And some of y'all may not get that, but he's talking about the bubble in a liquid level. And he was saying, are you, are you off? Bubble and a half, you're off. Meaning, you know, that I'm like uh, a little crazy, or I got a screw loose, or something like that. Or meaning, that, like, that's not right, you know, something like that. But it was just a joking way to, to welcome me into his home, so I remember that. Uh, but he wasn't just hospitable to family. Uh, this is going to sound familiar, too. He never met a stranger. In a store, he would randomly just tell someone hi <laughs> and wave to them <laughs> that he'd never seen before. Uh, and if you were willing, Michael would boldly engage with you, if, as y'all have already heard. Uh, you've seen the picture in the slideshow. I think there's a couple pictures in the slideshow with Michael dancing with a girl and uh, he got up, that's a total stranger, he got up and started dancing with her in a room full of 100 people and it was great. So he never met a stranger either. His hospitality was open to everyone. And I imagine many of you here today are here to pay your respects to Michael's family because of the hospitality that he showed to you, the friendliness that he showed to you during his life. And I think if Michael were looking down on us right now from heaven, he'd have a big smile on his face and a big thumbs up. <laughs> The second, Michael taught me about honor. In John 8, 49, Jesus said, I honor my father. Like Jesus, Michael also honored his father. One of my oldest memories <laughs> of Michael is him walking Donna down the aisle at our wedding. Michael knew how important this was, and he stepped up and stood in for his daddy. And he did it with great pride and joy. This memory also means a lot to me because unlike a lot of y'all, I never got to meet my wife's father. For me, Michael was the closest thing that I would see of Don Whipple outwardly and inwardly, I'm told. He would talk about his daddy frequently, uh, which kept the memory alive, Don, not only in his heart, but in all of ours. Finally, Michael taught me about love. 1 Timothy 1.5 talks about love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. That was the kind of love that Michael showed to everyone. His love knew no bounds. It was limitless. His love came from a pure heart. He didn't have to be prompted to express his love. Often, when we were just sitting around or watching TV or playing a game, he would randomly look at you and say, I like you. And that was his way of saying, of expressing his love to you. It wasn't always, I love you. A lot, most of the time it was, I like you. But that meant he loved you. Michael's love also came from a good conscience. He didn't play games like a lot of people do. His feelings were on his sleeve. He was honest and he was transparent. He was happy the most of the time. And, and when he was happy, every now and then he'd let you know. He'd say, I'm happy. Uh, but sometimes, uh, you know, he asked to do something he didn't want to do, and his answer was, I don't want to. So he said that plenty of times, too. And then there was also the times when he wasn't happy, and he would tell you that, too. He would say, I sad. And that was often followed by hugging and crying. And Michael's love also came from a sincere faith. Michael had the kind of faith that we all need to have, a childlike faith. From time to time, he would list all the family and friends he loved that were in heaven. Grandma, Papa, Preacher, Rocky, Elvis, Dr. Greers, etc. But mostly, he would say, Daddy in heaven, with Jesus, no more pain. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Well, now Michael is face to face with his daddy and with Jesus. His sincere faith has become sight. Michael, thank you for teaching me and, and so many others genuine hospitality, honor, and love. I will always like you. I'm happy, and I know you are as well. No more pain. See you soon, buddy. I was reading over the 
obituary and, and I noticed that um, Michael graduated, which I didn't know, but he graduated from uh, Fred Douglas, uh, the special education, uh, special education program. And um, he also, pro, uh, well, he's a track star, let's just say it that way, <laughs> in the Special Olympics. And I just think about that because I know what they mean. They mean that he had special needs. And I just think that's a funny thing to say um, about Michael. Uh, special gift, maybe special gift. That might work. Um, <clears throat> talking about him walking Donna down the aisle, and I remember the night before I got married uh, to Kathy, Eddie, her name's Kathy. <laughs> oh, name's Kathy. And I've got a story about that too, but uh, I remember that night, I had nothing to do. It's so funny. You, Get everything ready, have nothing to do. And uh, she was in another town getting ready. And so I was there with a uh, VHS. You remember, anybody remember those? Yeah. And, and, and what, the only movie I had was Forrest Gump. And uh, so I watched Forrest Gump, and, and I'd never seen it before. I'd heard about it, but I'd never seen it before. And when I watched it, I just kept thinking, I want to be more like him. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think the world needs fewer people like that. I think people meet, need more people like that. So I ask, what would this world be like if we had more of Michael? More people that had his heart. Um, we, he and I had a rocky relationship, to be very <laughs> honest with you. Uh, and the, here's the reason. Like Eddie, uh, I had a wife. And her name was Kathy, and now I don't know whether it's because she's gorgeous or her name's Kathy, maybe it's both. <laughs> but if she was in the room, and I was in the room, and Michael was in the room, and Kathy and I left the room, he had one thing to say. Bye, Kathy. <laughs> and it hurt my feelings. It hurt my feelings. Um, I so loved him. And to be able to stand here on this his homegoing um, is such an amazing thing. To hear what Eddie shared is what I wanted to share. Um, that if you need that peace that Michael has now, he's healed, he's whole. And if you want to know that peace, come and see me or Michael. I'm sure there are others or Eddie, um, Craig, whoever it might be, and we can share with you how you can have that kind of peace in Jesus Christ. He is whole. He is home. We, we, what we should be feeling is jealousy <laughs> a little bit because of what he's seeing. And, um, you know, there's an old play uh, called Our Town. I don't know if you remember the play. It doesn't have any props. You know, just there. And, and one of the things that happens is one of the characters uh, dies and gets to go back and, and see... Uh, their life and, and the, the um, suggestion or actually the, the directive is do not choose anything that is extraordinary. Don't, don't choose your birthday to go back on that day. Uh, choose the most simple day possible because that will be enough. It's the simple things that, that you will remember and that you will miss the most. And and I just think about that. I was talking to the girls earlier. I said, just give me something. I just, I need to know something that, from your perspective. And so uh, Madison Alarm was saying, um, you know how people, some people talk with their hands. He talked with his eyebrows. And he was extremely clear about how he felt about things with his eyebrows. And uh, I thought it was funny because they said, um, you know, he could get real judgy, but in a good way. You know, because if you were there and he didn't really like what you were doing, it's like, <laughs> you know, he would do that. And I, I, that, that, that simple memory just came flooding back uh, about him, and that's how uh, he would do. And just that half heart will stick with me uh, as well. Such sweet memories and just that uh, I like you. Uh, it's just really amazing. So I want to talk about this, uh, just a few simple things um, and, and share a passage with you that I've never done before 
in a funeral ever, um, and I've done many, but this one is special. The gifted, the gift kind of special. Um, it, it's just really amazing to think about those little things, like if you go to Facebook, I was gonna try to post this, let, let you see it as I was speaking. Uh, couldn't work, quite work that out, but um, his hands. His hands were amazing. And Donna posted a picture of her holding his hand, and uh, I have gone back to that hand over and over, because I don't know if I, if I had a picture of Jesus' hand, it'd be like that. Uh, she says it's like his dad's hands, which is, is I'm sure, true, Marilyn. But, um, but I, just, I, I just keep going back to that picture and looking at it and just going, what a beautiful hand. Thinking about how he used those hands and what he did to just love people, to show hospitality and, and to be welcoming and uh, to hold hands. Uh, I think about his mind, not his brain. His brain was the way he went home. You know, it was his brain that, that was the manner in which God called him home, but his mind was the mind of Christ and uh, just how he thought. Um, and as I said a minute ago, it, it's, it's amazing to think Jesus, so many times what we think is uh, to come to Jesus, you need to become an adult. You need to understand it. And I was sharing uh, with my church uh, just this past week that we don't, we don't need to have an amazing understanding. As a matter of fact, we just sang a song to start this homegoing celebration for Michael. And, and it's from John chapter 9. And, and they were quizzing this blind man about uh, how he got his sight. And they were trying to say, Jesus is a loser and you know he needs to be kicked out and we need to ignore him. And, and they were saying, well, who do you say he is? You were blind. You said he healed you. Who do you say he is? And he said, look, I don't know who he is. Here's what I know. I was blind, and now I see. That's, that's what he said. And, and I just, that simplicity and beauty of Michael's mind and how he thought, how we could just, you know, bubble and a half. That's just, I've never heard that in my life. I, I, just, I just learned something from someone who was so amazing and living 50 years on this earth and could say wonderful, wonderfully simple things like that. His hands, his mind. And then this one was going to be original. I didn't know that the three men that spoke before me were going to speak so beautifully about it, but his heart. Oh, gosh, that I can have a little bit of Michael's heart in me. That we all can. Yep. It would be more like that heart. Think, uh, the, the Bible says that you should always think of everyone more highly than yourself. And it's amazing that we never teach our kids to, to, to do that, but they always do. You know, I don't know how many times I've heard, I got shotgun. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in the front. No, you had it last time. Well, I get it this time too, because you got to eat the last piece of the pie. So, and it's always, you know, but, but what I just noticed in, noticed in Michael's heart, and it's not changed today, because he is not dead. He is just in glory. And we don't grieve the same way. But that heart, that heart, we're going to miss that heart. And just what he brought, those, those simple little things, those hands, that beautiful, wonderful mind, those eyebrows. <laughs> but mostly, and most importantly, that heart. I thank God as I close that he's healed. You know, all of the things that, that, that were seemingly holding him back, which in many ways was thrusting him forward, but, but those, those things that held him back, as Craig shared, that, you know, just he wasn't developed mentally, um, those things that held him back are now gone. They're not there anymore. He's whole, he's healed. Not just from a tumor, but from everything. He's running, he's laughing, 
He's singing. Amazingly. He's still saying bubble and a half, I'm sure. <laughs> but all those things he's doing. And so I'm sharing a scripture as I close with prayer. I want to share a scripture with you. It's a short one. But it's one I want us all to know. Because we all have them. It may not be a mental uh, incapacitation, so to speak. I should air quote that with Michael. But it may not be that. But maybe it's a physical one for you. It's not going to be there forever. And if you know Jesus, you are going to have incredible health, both mentally and physically. This is what it says. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And I just know in these last days for Marilyn, for Donna, the entire family, I know that there have been so many struggles uh, and just watching that wasting process. It's not fun. And it doesn't look, I went through it with my brother, it doesn't look like what the Bible promises us. That the outward is wasting away. For every single person in this room, it's wasting away. But in Michael, he was being renewed. Every one of those wasting days. And now he's healed and he's whole and he's home. And we praise Jesus for a life well lived. A life that I hope I can be more like live more like and one day we'll see him again bubble and a half and all <laughs> let's pray together God what a wonderful wonderful man we come and celebrate today we love him so much but he liked us and we're so grateful we're so grateful to be liked because he liked like you like he loved us so much and father I pray now that again as I've shared with the family as we lay him in your arms for a little while until one day we're all reunited father that you just receive him for to you and into your hands we commend his spirit and Father, as we wait until the day where we're all reunited, we continue as the song as Francie so beautifully sang, we'll continue to fight this fight. We'll continue to run this race just like Michael taught us to do. Thank you, Jesus.